Hi, I'm England and I'm in Long Island making harvesting wild rice. They call it a vegetable. It is one island and it's beautiful here, beautiful country. What things do you need before rice picking harvesting? What do you need before we start? Well, you need a canoe. <laughs> and you have to have trashing sticks. That's what you need. Then uh, you have a paddler to take you to, to trash the rice. Freaking cold water. <laughs> Believe it or not, I came here when I was a baby in England with Mishum, my Mishum, Kokum. So how did you guys get here? My grandfather came by boat up the Winnipeg River. Oh, really? Yeah, far away, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's really far. All of the heads in the boat, eh? That's Our people would come around here around harvesting time, uh, which... Uh, is centered around the full moon uh, in September. That moon's called Manuma Nikegis. It's for our people. Many communities around Saging and, and even in Ontario, this was a hub, of, a meeting place for harvesters. Old timers, they would fill the canoe twice in a day. And I mean, fill it, right from the front all the way to the back to where they're sitting. And the beauty part of that is uh, picking rice by hand, because you're picking by hand, most of it is landing on uh, inside the canoe. And some of it is falling into the water, and that's next year's crop, you see? They picked and planted at the same time. It was beautiful life. Why is traditional food better for us? Looking back at my elders, they never had sugar diabetes. They never had heart attacks. They had their gardens, and they also ate moose, deer, rabbit. Those are natural foods. It's our way of life in traditional food, there's nothing mixed. It comes straight from Mother Earth and into the house. It's uh, Indian rice, wild rice. And it's very nutritious, very tasty. You can make all kinds of things with wild rice. You can use uh, fruit in it, meat, make a, a casserole, stir fry. Our people used to make popcorn out of it once they harvest it. Yeah, that's my favorite dessert, one of them. <laughs> you um, add uh, blueberries to the rice with maple syrup. Oh, that's really tasty. Very healthy for diabetics, too. Mm. That was good. <laughs> mm. How much money they used to make that? Lots of money. Back in those days, I'm talking the 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s, used to buy a car when they go home. It started to get a little bit more commercialized, meaning that people would come in here and, and buy our people's rice at, at so much per pound. In the 70s, there was an introduction of mechanical picking, uh, airboat picking. It was a really good idea for picking rice, so you could go on this lake and pick this lake clean in, in, in days. It harvests, but it doesn't plant. I stopped as uh, soon as I saw that, and came back to uh, hand-picking. Why was it important to the next generation about harvesting rice? Hey, Arish, is the same home. Arish, not be a kind of, kind of weekends, you know, where Arish, not be a guy, you get where they say. What's important to learn to be proud of who you are as a Anishinaabe person. And to learn all these things in life, 
the good things in life, like the nature, the animals, the seasons, like the rice picking season. So that when you grew up and be an old man like me, that you'll be able to teach what I just teach you today. It's important being one to know this stuff. Maybe pick enough and it'll last us the winter, it'll last us till the next season. Me, when you come and try, try some of the rice, I want you to tell me which one you like the best. Here we have white rice. And try a little bit of that. Ooh. No, brown rice. And here we have the wild rice. And try some of that. This is delicious. Mmm. Salty. Yogurty. Goody. <laughs> And I'm showing this to you because I want you to be able to, at, at any point in your life, that you could come here and, and then that you could pick rice and know how to pick rice and know that you'd be able to feed yourself. <laughs>